thanks, Edon, and thanks for um, asking me to come along this evening. Um, so what I'm here basically to talk about this evening is my 6am experiment. I suppose it all kind of started off as being a blog, just started off as a blog article, really. Um, I suppose just as we're going through tonight, maybe think maybe if you were getting up, if you got up two hours earlier, so I was kind of getting up around 8 o'clock every morning. I'm in college most days, you know, don't start at 11. Some days don't have to go in at all, um, just the way that the timetable is structured. I suppose just to kind of see for yourselves, maybe could getting up two hours earlier, could it help your maybe private lives, social lives, work-life balance, things along, um, things along with that. So I suppose I'll just start going through it now. So uh, just a quote from Dale Carnegie, Gail Carnegie, uh, nothing will work in all cases and uh, nothing will work with all people. If you're satisfied with the results you're getting now, why change? If you're not satisfied, why not experiment? So I suppose maybe with say that a lot of you are here tonight probably shows that you're trying to develop, you're trying to change, you're not 100% happy with absolutely everything. And I suppose a disclaimer as well because I suppose nothing will work with all people. I suppose this is kind of just the way that I kind of found things. This is how, I suppose these are just my experiences and obviously I'm different. I don't have maybe three or four kids running around the house that is going to kind of influence me in the way that my day is set up. So I suppose maybe just to go through it and just to kind of see uh, what, what you make of it. So why? I suppose it's, it's the question that I kind of got asked the most, you know, be it through the blog or through social media or when you meet up with people, it's kind of, why, why would you bother getting up two hours early? Why would you bother getting up at six o'clock in the morning, you know? Is that not kind of stupid? Is that not ridiculous? And I suppose where that kind of started out was, um, I was reading uh, Malcolm Gladwell's book, uh, Outliers, The Story of Success. So it looks at, you know, really successful people and what kind of differentiated them from the people that might have been exactly the same, that might have been intellectually better. And um, it's an old Chinese proverb. So no one who can rise before uh, dawn, 360 days of a year, fails to make his family rich. And so that's kind of a case of, whoa, do you know? If all, it, if all it takes is to get up before dawn, 360 days a year, do you know, why not do it? So I suppose I was kind of looking at the correlation between that. Um, do you know, is it just because they get up at dawn? Or is it, because of, is it because of something else? Like you very rarely, very rarely hear millionaires or billionaires even talking about getting up at lunchtime and watching Jeremy Kyle for an hour and a half and then, you know, <laughs> watching Judge Judy and then going to work for a while. So, so it was really a case of that and I was kind of thinking, do you know what I mean? Why, why is that? Um, so maybe kind of looking at personal management versus time management. Like time management really only, like the way that I was kind of seeing it is that an awful lot of it was about personal management, whether I was kind of, you know, disciplined enough to go do the things that I wanted to do, go do the goals that I'd, say, set out for myself at the start of the year. And I suppose I started this on, started this on the 1st of February. I suppose kind of metaphorically, maybe symbolically, it was good because it's kind of the spring, you know, a new start, that kind of way. So it's, so, um, so I was looking at the kind of personal management versus time management. Uh, time management, I think, really only comes into it when you're, say, when you've, when you're working maybe 20 hours a day and you're kind of looking at it and kind of going, geez, where do I cut back? Whereas personal management is where you kind of, where you're not achieving your goals, where you're not really focused or kind of driven enough. And I suppose the way that I was kind of thinking about it was that if I, if I kind of have all these big plans, if you want to run these companies, if you want to, do you know what I mean, become a millionaire, become a billionaire, like, the very first thing you should be able to do, and it's thing all of us do every morning, is get up at whatever time you want to be able to get up. Like if I can't make those three simple movements whenever I want, you know what I mean? Sit up, turn around, and then stand up out of the bed. How am I going to run any of these companies, or how am I going to do anything great? And it's just, that, that makes it, that's probably kind of maybe trivializing it a small bit, and kind of, you're kind of going, well, do you know what I mean? Ask me that at three o'clock in the morning, I'll probably tell you something different. But this was, on a more practical level then, it was looking at it and kind of going, maybe that, why is it that all these kind of business leaders and people like that get up early in the morning and, do you know what I mean, are the early mornings, are they more productive? And I suppose what, when I kind of, when I started looking at it, I kind of started looking at what do I do? Do you know what I mean? If you get up early in the mornings, it means you have to go to bed earlier at night because no one can live on no sleep unless you're, I don't know, someone like Bill Cullen who hasn't slept in the last five years. But basically, he was kind of thinking of, uh, yeah. <laughs> So basically, I was only thinking about it kind of like, like that. So it was in the evenings, I was looking at it, and I was doing maybe very little productive that, do you know what I mean? In the evenings, there was an awful lot going on. You, I wasn't very focused, um, do you know what I mean? You'd watch TV, or you might get a phone call from someone going, oh, come on, let's go out and do this now, or let's do that. And do you know 
you know what I mean? Things that probably, just because you've been early looking for an excuse to work for is, if you get up at six o'clock in the morning, do you know what I mean? Nobody's going to ring you at six o'clock in the morning wondering are you going to go out. That's unless they're on the way home from somewhere and they're kind of calling in, kind of going, gee, Shane is up at six. Let's, let's call into Shane's. Um, and this was one of the first mornings that I actually did this. I got up and I'm living in student accommodation. I went outside and, or well, I walked into the kitchen and across the way I could see another kitchen. And um, it, there, was a group of, there was a group of crowd having a session where they were all playing guitars at six o'clock in the morning. I was like, geez, you know, this is a real, probably a contrast in you know, our kind of lifestyles and whatever else. And it was just, they were, they were, their kind of day was ending and mine was kind of beginning, I suppose. Um, so then the next thing, how, how did I kind of make it successful? How did I ensure that I kind of achieved my goal of, you know, getting up at six o'clock every morning? Like, there's so many different reasons and different things that someone could come up with to prevent them from doing it. So I suppose at the beginning it was extreme productivity, probably, or pos positivity even it became farcical to some extent um, like when I was writing the, the blog post where this all started I was kind of thinking it up and at the start I called it the 6am challenge but then you're kind of thinking straight away that challenge is a very negative kind of a word so when I'm there in bed uh, and the alarm goes off at whatever quarter to six in the morning and you're, you're kind of going geez this is going to be a challenge to get up whereas if it's an experiment it's, you know what I mean, it's slightly more positive that way and you kind of sit up out of bed and you're kind of like, right, I'm going to do this and I suppose the experiment kind of type side of things as well, um, like I'll go through is there's different variables in the experiment, some work, don't, some don't work. I suppose more pro um, the positivity side of things as well, on my blog post it was, you know, this picture, this beautiful sunrise and everything else, whereas six o'clock in the morning on the 1st of February, it's, um, it's pitch black outside. <laughs> and then when it did get brighter around eight o'clock, I was basically only looking across the road at the abandoned Kingsley Hotel and the car park, the derelict kind of car park and everything else that was beside it. So I suppose it's, it was about being positive. And this was this weekend, the kind, of, the kind of climax of that was this weekend that my sister, she, she was going to Limerick and she kind of goes, oh, will you, um, or she goes, will you wake me up at, will you wake me up at 10 past six because I have to go and I was like, yeah, I have my, uh, my opportunity clock set. She was like, you're what? And I was in my opportunity. And this, this has become so built in. And do you know what I mean? When I had heard someone else speaking, um, you know, when, um, I'd heard another, you know, productivity speaker and whatever else. And he goes, you know, you have to get up every morning. You have to change your mindset. So that's what I kind of started to do. So when I get up, I set my productivity clock rather than your, or your, yeah, your kind of um, opportunity clock rather than your um, alarm clock. Because when you're getting up, it's kind of a case of, right, what am I going to do now? This is my chance to do something. This is my chance to go in, you know, make something of my day. Um, and that kind of side of things. So the, the, posi the pos um, positivity side of things just became farcical, but it became, you know, a really, a really good way of getting things to work. Um, and then, yeah, this thing then as well, because when people come along and they say, you know, how, they'll always give you an example of, Jeez, I couldn't do that, you know, I'd be, I'd be wrecked tired, or I couldn't do that, my house was freezing in the morning, I couldn't get out of bed, or, do you know what I mean, there's a whole list of excuses, so I suppose Jim Rohn, um, you know, probably one of, one of the greatest uh, motivational speakers of all time said, you know, if you really want to do something, you'll find a way, if not, you'll find an excuse, and that really came into it, so when I was looking down through, you know, the reasons why this wouldn't work, do you know what I mean, it'd be too cold, well, do you know, set the heater to come on at that time, do you know, or, or just have like the dressing going next to the bed or I can't get up because do you know, I'll just hit the alarm. Well then put the alarm over the other side of the room so you've no other choice but to get up or to put it on top of the shelf so that you have to reach up or put another alarm in the kitchen so that you'll have to go out and get it or else you'll wake everyone else up in the house. Like there was just so many different ways of you know, coming across these kind of hurdles and kind of I suppose finding a way to do it. Um, get organised. Like this, this became a real part, this became a real, I suppose any, if you look at any of the successful business people that there have been, like a common thread going through this is that they have all have their own goals. They set them by day, by week, you know, by month, by year. And every night before I went to bed, I was like, geez, I'm not gonna be getting up at six o'clock in the morning to do absolutely nothing. So what I did was, you know, write down exactly the things I want to get done in the morning. And so when I got up, I uh, got started straight away, you know, I get up a quarter to six so that I'm ready to get into my work by six o'clock. And just as you do the different things, get your different goals achieved, you just tick them off as you go down through your tasks and then you're building, you don't build that momentum then for the day. Um, and then I suppose get organised just with so many other things. When, when I had my day planned out, that it was, when I started to plan out my days then, 
I was kind of like, geez, why didn't I get that task done in the hour or the hour and a half that I had it set up for? There's, there's no reason why he couldn't get it done. So you know, things like emails and stuff that were getting distracting because um, as Adon said, that, you know, I'm involved with different groups and you, know, you might get an email during the day when I had an hour set out to do a task. And then you, know, you might think that an email only takes you five or 10 minutes away from your task. But then if you're, if you're focused working on something, well, this, this is from my own experience. And if you're focused working on something and you take 10 minutes to go away and answer an email, and then when you come back, your mind isn't done it properly for maybe another five minutes. So if you get emails throughout the day, maybe if you answer one email an hour, then it's just going to take your mind away from it. And that's something that I kind of found so get organized, set times during the day for email, basically planned out my day. And like, that doesn't mean that I sit around like a robot the whole day going, don't talk to me, don't talk to me, this is my time. But like, it just gave me that bit more, you know, gave me more time in the evenings because I was because I'd have planned out that way. The self-awareness part of this was that comes into with the experiment side of things and the different variables. Um, there, was, there was things, there was clearly things that didn't work. Um, there was clearly things that kind of evolved as they went along. And this was just to go on to the, the results side of things then. Because um, this self-awareness ties in with the results is very much, there's no fixed structure to the way this worked. And the personal side of, um, Satisf satisfaction was basically through, um, was basically because I set my goal to do this for a month, just for the month of February and see how it goes. And then I ended up doing it for, I'm, I'm still doing it at the moment. So it's six, seven weeks uh, coming up to two months now on it. And it was kind of a great kind of thing to go, right. I got, you know, I set that as my goal to do and I did it. And also the satisfaction of getting the different things done you know, throughout my day and ticking them off and definitely I've gotten a lot more done. Um, I've gotten a lot more done throughout, the, you know, throughout my day and gotten a lot more of my different goals done out because I was more focused on them, you know, getting up earlier in the morning and everything like I was saying already. Um, so the new routine, I suppose for the last, for maybe a couple of months before that, I had these different goals that I wanted to try to achieve and it was very much a case of trying to fit them into my old routine. Like if I get up at eight o'clock in the morning and if I have a lecture at nine, like a thing about go to the gym every morning, how, how are you possibly gonna to go to the gym uh, every morning and eat a proper breakfast? You can't do that in the space of an hour. It's like trying to park a, lar um, a lorry in a garage. Uh, basically to kind of knock my garage, knock my routine down. And just when I started out, it let me reset it completely. Let me reset how I kind of, how I got through my day. Um, and so that, that was great because I suppose it was just things that I wanted to do and it relates back to the personal satisfaction side of things as well. So eat healthier, something that I wanted to do since I left school and since my mother stopped making my lunch for me was basically to start to, when I go to college every morning to have a, you know, a packed lunch because I suppose number one, it saves money and number two, because you're eating healthier rather than going into the canteen in college or a restaurant or whatever else and do you know what I mean? You know what you're going to eat and this was a stop you, you know, eating, eating junk really throughout the day. So that was one thing that I was really happy with. And when, because I was getting home earlier in the evenings as well, it gave me that bit more time to, you know, sit down and eat, eat a, you know, make a proper meal. Do you know what I mean? I, I might be a young fellow with still, do you know what I mean? I know how to cook a steak or whatever else. So more gym, which I think really impacted and really impacted on the way that I'm kind of feeling at the moment and you know, everything else. I think it was um, Richard Branson, you know, they once asked him, you know, how'd you get so much done? You can't add, you know, more hours to a day or whatever else. And he goes, yeah, I can. He said, it's very simple. All you have to do is, um, he goes, I exercise, or you know, do you want to know how to add four hours onto a day? And the crowd said, yes. And he goes, I exercise for one hour a day. And you might think that's nonsense. Sure, wouldn't you be more tired? But yeah, you might for the first week or maybe two weeks. But like we're human beings, we need to be, you know, we, we weren't made for sitting at desks. And I suppose to give you that more, bit more energy, and I know that maybe you might have different views on this, but that's what I found, that you're kind of healthier. Do you know what I mean? You look at the likes of Richard Branson, you look at some of the top executives and all them, and there's very few of them are obese, overweight, and all this kind of side of things. Um, more spare time. If you're doing, you're getting the things out of the way in the morning, you're getting more done because you're more focused. Um, and then I suppose more spare time came into because I had more time in the evenings than when other people would have been off rather than that would have been when I would have done most of my work, say, in the past. And I suppose looking at it as well, in the morning when I was looking at it, I was, say, 
I was kind of going, geez, well, that same thing about you know, the emails, looking at why you couldn't get that task done. And I suppose one thing that I was looking at then was looking at something like Facebook, you know, the amount of time they're spending on social networks, like people who are over 25 spend on average eight hours a day. People who are um, 18 to 25 spend 11 hours a day on social networks. So like, if you think about that, if that's 11 hours, if I'm spending 11 hours a week, I don't know, it works out as something like 26 days a year that are gone. Um, and then over the space of 50, every 15 years, that means you're using one year of your life to social networks, which is, I suppose it shows the good and the bad. And if you're gonna, f like, I still use Twitter, but I don't really use Facebook anymore. And so that sped into the new routine side of things as well. Healthier through the self-awareness side of things. I suppose it comes back into the exercise and stuff like that. You have to, do you know what I mean? Measuring different things and kind of seeing what works for you and what doesn't work for you and different variables. Like, do you know what I mean? You might say that you're only sitting at a desk and that's all that you do or that's all your job involves. With it, Michael Schumacher, um, the, one of the best Formula One uh, drivers of all time, won seven world championships. They used to do blood tests for him before and after every single race and they would see the elements or the nutrients or whatever, the smallest fractions of things to the parts per million, what he was missing. And all he was doing was driving around in circles. Like some of your jobs, like obviously that's mentally tasking, but it, it kind of shows too that the amount of, the smallest difference that this can make in your concentration and your kind of, you know, your life in general. And it might seem like a small thing, but these kind of things build up over time. And I suppose looking at the variables as well and what works and what doesn't work, I suppose um, one thing that I kind of noticed as well is that I had to be very aware of what I, wa or what, what I was kind of doing to myself and I had to be very aware of say, my moods and stuff because for the first say 10 days, two weeks, I realized that I wasn't getting enough sleep. So I was still having my same going to, going to bed time, whereas I was doing less um, where I was actually getting up, um, you know, obviously two hours earlier, which wasn't working out. So I noticed that things like I had to try and start going to bed earlier or else I get kind of cranky or kind of this kind of weird, do you know what I mean? I wasn't probably the best person to be around. And then also that during the day that if I drank tea or coffee, if I was feeling kind of down and used that as a pick me up, that I start getting jittery in the evenings, like actually literally, you know, kind of getting a small bit anxious and that kind of way. And then once I cut it out, it was grand. But I suppose it was just about being that kind of self-awareness that you notice that. Um, less sleep, but better quality. That was because of things like really, all these things kind of fed into each other, I suppose. I stopped using uh, emails and stuff at night. Then like after eight, seven or eight o'clock at night, just don't bother with them. Um, there's gonna be nothing that's gonna be that important really. Like if someone is, say if someone, like one of, the, one of the groups that I'm involved with, if someone emails you at half nine on a Saturday night or 10 o'clock going, oh, that the speaker is pulled out, then what are you gonna do at 10 o'clock on a Saturday night about it? May as well wait till six o'clock the next morning and you know what I mean, the whole day is there to, to sort it out really. Um, and also then, you know, there's a lot of these kind of studies coming out now about looking at the, you know, the blue colors from the screen affecting your sleep and all this kind of thing and not being able to wind down at night. And so as I started reading a lot more because I was setting myself, so I was like, right, go to bed at whatever time it was, half nine, I might read for an hour, an hour and a half. So in the last three months, um, I think I've read something like five or six books like as in proper books. And that's more than what I read throughout the entire year before that I would say. It's about the same amount because I had more time and I wasn't wasting it on you know, social networks or emails, or whatever else. I was just setting everything into the pasture today. So, and it's great. There's nothing better than going to sleep when you're going to sleep after you know, a bit of reading. It's a great way to wind down and it doesn't have the same kind of mental stimulation on you as in the kind of negative forms of stimulation. And I suppose like we've had a lot of um, coaches and stuff would say, you know, reading is the best form of self-investment in yourself and probably one of the cheapest forms. So, like, it's been, it's been fantastic, really, from that kind of side of things. <laughs> Perfect. I suppose, I suppose, this is, I think, there's two slides left, but kind of guilt is good. I suppose when you're getting up in the morning, um, or um, I suppose what I'm trying to say is that if you're feeling, you've, when you start getting into this kind of thing, when you say if you got up at 9 or 10 o'clock, uh, it feels as if you're getting up at lunchtime and you're kind of going, geez, that's kind of my whole day gone now. So I suppose when you start to form habits like that, it's kind of the real, it's kind of sometimes the guilt and whatever else that kind of gets you going with it. Um, personal branding, I suppose that's just through the blog, really, do you know what I mean? And it's been, it's been great from that kind of point of view. And, uh, you know, when I get up every, so off, every couple of mornings, I might throw a tweet out there on Twitter, just 
do you know, who's up at this kind of time in the morning or whatever else, and you get certain things back. I suppose just to, to finish with this, finish where we started, you know, nothing will work in all cases and nothing will work with all people. Uh, you might be thinking, oh, this guy's crazy and this thing didn't work, but it kind of, a lot of it worked for me. And this is kind of the way that I found it. Do you know what I mean? That you can take what you want from it, but this is what, this is the way that I kind of got things working for me and this is how I became more productive in my life. So it mightn't work for you, it might, but uh, if it does, kind of best to look to you with it. So that's, that's it.